So in this video, what I'm doing is drying out another native Iowa wildflower. It's called the bluebell, or I just found out another alternative name for it is the witch's thimble. So that's what I'm drying out in this video today. The bluebell, also known as witch's thimble. I think there's a bunch of different flowers that people call bluebells that all sort of look vaguely not the same, and I'm not really sure. Like, this happens with lots of flowers. Like, everybody has different names for them, and there's diff this, different flowers will all have the same name, and sometimes the same flower has 20 different names. It's very confusing, which is why we have scientific names, I know, but then I can't ever keep those straight in my head since I'm not a uh, proficient Latin speaker. But anyway, you can see I'm just starting out by drawing with pencil. I used a mechanical pencil because this uh, notebook that I'm working in, I believe it's handmade paper, either that or it's very um, loosely pressed. It, it feels like watercolor paper, um, so it's a little bit fragile and it seems to just soak the pencil right in when I was using a regular pencil and the point of the mechanical pencil uh, it just seems to work a little bit better when it's not slicing through the paper because I did have an issue with that a few times. Um, I did color on this and you'll see when I get to the colored pencil that I also had some issues with. Uh, well, essentially putting holes in the paper with the colored pencils. Um, to add contrast, I also will use an ultra fine tip sharpie permanent marker um, towards the end of the clip here. I tore a few holes with that too, but what are you going to do? Nobody's perfect. So that's um, a Prismacolor color pencil that I'm using there, just like I've used in my last video. I usually have pretty good luck with them. I have several tins. They come in these fancy metal tins. And so bluebells aren't this blue, or witches thimbles, whatever you want to call them. I think that's a really cool name. Um, but I started with the darker colors and I'm going to go over the top to make it lighter. It's kind of counterintuitive to do it that way, but I think it gets me a good result in the end. And once again, wasn't necessarily going for realism, just wanted to be able to tell that these were bluebells, and I wanted them to look pretty, because I like pretty flowers, and I think, well really who doesn't, and I like the product that I end up with in the end here, and I did choose to speed up the video for you here for a couple of reasons, first of all, I just spent a lot of time goofing around on this one and had to edit some, uh, me walking around looking for pens out. <laughs> But also, I just put a lot of texture in this, so it took me a really long time. The original video was like 30 minutes long, so I thought, hey, we cut it down a little, and that'll be just peachy keen. You can see I went back to the mechanical pencil to harden those lines. The issue with the colored pencil was that it was definitely smudging around on this paper. So keeping nice, sharp lines was the struggle the whole time with this one. As was keeping my camera focusing on the paper and not the back of my hand, but that's a different issue. You see I tore the paper a little bit there. But that's okay, because I can go back over it with the color pencil, which I will. But it's taking some black again, make it nice and high contrast. Trying to make my light source look like it's coming from the top right. So my shadows are heavier on the bottom and to the left for the most part. I'm trying to keep it lighter towards the light source. And as if the light were a little bit behind the flowers. It's like it's brighter further away from us, the petals that are in the back, in the back part of the flower. Hopefully on this recording here, you're not just getting a hiss of the static because my laptop's thinking really hard to process this video at high speed. Kind of making a perfect whooshing sound, but... Well, this was fun, and this is the second day I've done a wildflower, and I think I'm going to try to do one every day. I don't know if I'll post a video every day, but... 
sometimes you just have to do some art that's for you and for nobody else and these flowers are literally just for me oh yeah and here i went in with pink which bluebells aren't pink but it needed some warmth to brighten them up just a little bit i'm using several different colors of green several different colors of blue and just building up color because i just think it looks better that way it makes things a little more dimensional and pop and here's the important part the white that's going over the top not only is it lending highlights to the flowers but it's allowing you to blend all the colors that are underneath into a more accurate representation of the color bluebells actually are hmm. it's hard to tell because i've got the whole thing in my hand but i run out of white color pencils so fast i use them all the time when i'm working with color pencil because not only are they good for highlight but they blend 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 you see i tore the paper again i push so hard it's a lovely paper, but it's got its own unique challenges to it, that's for sure. So anyway, yeah, I think there's some nice pop to that where it's white there. Now I've got the permanent marker, the ultra fine tip Sharpie. I do have to argue with this thing in this paper a little bit too because the ink was liking to spread out on me when I was trying to use it to get some really sharp edged texture. And I do. I think it ends up with an okay product, but again, just something to work with a new, it's not really a new medium. Obviously I've drawn on paper before, but this specific paper being so sort of spongy and loosely compressed was new for me. And I love the way it looks, and I love the way these flowers are looking. So I think the more of these I do, the more I'll learn to work with the paper instead of against it. Because practice makes, I'll say practice makes better, because there's no such thing as perfect, but well, practice makes good enough. Good enough is good enough. I know that's something I say pretty regularly, but that's because I really believe it. So once again, I'm using that Sharpie to add depth. So using it as shadow, but also to give texture and separate objects from one another. So the different petals of the flowers. But to break up any little smooth surfaces on the flowers also because well, too smooth is boring and nothing in nature is like that really unless it's a rock that's been tumbled in a stream for 20 years then it might be pretty smooth but living things that grow out of the end grow out of the ground have rough edges even the prettiest growing things have some rough edges and some imperfections maybe that's why i like drawing or painting living things so much is because they just grow the way they're going to. And life uh, finds a way, as it were. And it doesn't always find its way in the direction we think it's going to. And that's what makes things like this. These flowers are mostly and most so special and so fun to draw, I think. They're never boring. Never boring. I'm still lining and adding shadows. Again, this that's why I sped up this video. It, it took me forever to do this. It felt like, okay, if, it, if the original video was a half an hour, it wasn't forever, but it felt like forever. Especially because I recorded this one without audio because my microphones are still doing weird things. So I'm recording audio over the top. And you can see I tore the paper again there. I'm going to have to fix it. Use some, go back with color pencil to blend it, but yeah, that's what happened is the paper tore on me. Well, I'm not sure why the picture in picture is so glitchy right there, but you know, we work with what we've got. The technology that I'm running is uh, maybe a little ahead of my computer that's several years old now, but. 
make it work in my right. As best we can anyway. This is getting to the final finishing touches here now. Just building up the shadow and light. I'm pretty happy with this one. I might be happier with this one than I was with the uh, tall hairy agrimony that I posted the other day, just because I think I got used to the paper a little bit more. And also I didn't think to use the marker to sharpen my lines on the other one. Maybe I'll go back and do that, but it feels like once I posted it, I can't go back. No takes back season. Oh, toilet paper again. You, you learn. If you make art, you learn that things always go wrong and you always gotta have a plan A, plan B, plan C, probably B, E, and F as well. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Little blue bells. Almost looks kind of like stained glass in this paper. That might just be because I've again stayed more in the realm of pop art with the style that I drew these and they're certainly not realistic. I'm just trying to draw the light and the texture because that's the part that interests me the most. So this video has been just a brief little tutorial of how I drew out these bluebells, or as they're otherwise known, apparently, which is symbols, which is just a super cool word. So if you watch this whole video, I appreciate it, and thank you for watching. And I hope to post more videos of me doing wildflowers like this in the future. So if you enjoyed this at all, please check out some of my other videos and hit the subscribe button to get notifications. Drop a like or a comment or feel free to place requests in the comments too. Anything you want. It's uh, feedback you'd like to give me. And I'd like to hear what you have to say if you're out there and you watch my videos. So I had fun doing this and I hope you had a nice day and are still having a nice day and continue to have a nice day. I'll see you next time and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye now.